There are different types of intelligence. The older I get, the more I realize that different people are better at certain things naturally. Everyone has things that they're better at and things that they're not so good at. Some people are really good at putting things together. They can get some furniture from Ikea or another furniture store and they can just put it together. And these people will look at someone who is not so good at that and they'll say, oh, you just need to read the directions, work slower, take your time, have patience. The same way that someone who is naturally good at math will look at someone who is not so good at math naturally and say, you need to take your time, you know, work harder, you know, read the directions, you know, slow down. And this is good advice, but this video is not really about how some people are naturally better than other people. It's about how you can actually measure your ability. And the easiest way, well, the way that most people do it in society is through something called an IQ test. You take this test and this test will tell you, you know, how smart you are or how not smart you are. And it's based on something called IQ. But I think there's an even better way to do it, which unfortunately is subjective but I'm gonna give you a guideline that you can use in this video. And since this is a math channel and we're talking about mathematics, we're just gonna relate it to math. But you can use any subject for this, right? You can go back to you know, putting things together with your hands. You know, If you have friends that are really good at building things and you see that you are not good at building things, Talk to them, ask them, how long have you been building things? You know, how did you learn? You know, how long did it take you to learn? Oftentimes you'll find that these people, they have way more experience than you, but, but they had an easier time getting started because they're naturally gifted. They are naturally better at certain things. I mean, that's, it's genetics, I think. I really think it is. I think certain people are just better naturally. Now, that doesn't mean that if you don't have the gift, if you don't have the ability, you can't learn. I have seen people rise from the ashes. I have seen people who struggle with mathematics rise up above and end up with the top score in the class and blow away all of their peers who have so much more natural ability. Natural talent will not take you very far if you don't work hard, right? There's that old saying, oh, hard work beats talent until talent works hard. I love that, I love that quote. It's true. It's true, but don't let that be a reason not to try if you feel like you're struggling, right? You should always try to do your best even if you feel you don't have natural talent. And when you feel that you don't have natural talent, you should be aware of that and realize that that means that you might have to work a little bit harder than someone else to get the same goals. And there's nothing you can do about that, right? Except try harder. That's just the sad reality. So, so how do you measure your ability mathematically? I was thinking about this today because I was thinking about how I feel about my own ability. So I've taken a lot of math classes. I've taken so many math classes. It's, it's completely ridiculous. And I've thought about it for a long time. And, and I've mentioned this before. So if you've seen my videos, you've heard this before. And it's funny because I always give the same number. So it must be true because I've said this so many times. I, I feel like it's a really accurate representation of what I know. In every single math class, in every single class, and there are some exceptions where I, I was better, but most of the time, on average, if I sat down in a lecture in class, I would understand 60 to 70% of what was being discussed. So that means that I would go to class, I would sit down with my, with my paper, right, with my paper and my pencil, I would take notes, you know, I'd write everything down, I'd listen, but I would write everything down. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a person who, who would just sit there and say, oh, I have a picture memory, I'm a visual learner. No, 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 no. I would hang on to every word and write everything down. And I would go home and look at my notes and I would say, I understand maybe 60 to 70% of what's written down on this piece of paper. So after going to class, writing everything down, I understood 60 to 70%. So if you feel that you go to class and you write everything down, 
and you understand 60 to 70 percent of what's being taught, then you're pretty much exactly like me, right? And, and that number is pretty accurate because I've mentioned this before. I've made hundreds of videos. I have thousands of videos on the channel here. And I've thought about this so many times. And I'm 60 to 70 percent every time on average. There were some classes where I maybe understood 80 to 90 percent. I mean, that, that did happen. I had some classes where I really loved the subject. Um, abstract algebra was one that I was always really drawn to, um, and I learned a lot of abstract algebra, a lot, um, a ton of abstract algebra, uh, because I liked it so much. And I understood a lot of it uh, more quickly. I was able to learn it faster than other subjects. I was able to learn abstract algebra more easily than, say, combinatorics. And, th and that happens in mathematics. There will be some subjects that you're better at, just like some people are better at building things with their hands, some people are better at abstract algebra. Some people are better at probability. Why? Because there's something about the way their brain works. They're able to absorb that knowledge better. Maybe it's because they like it better. Whatever it is, they're better at it, right? You're, they're better at it. So if you can understand more than 60 to 70% of what's in your notes, then you know more than me, right? So if you're, if you're, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, I understand almost everything in class, ha! Huh. You, you, you are, you, you have it made. Your life is so good. Um, I mean, honestly, if you go to class and you understand more than I did, that means you're way smarter than me and you know so much, you can learn so much more than me, right? You, you have so much more potential. If you're feeling like you understand maybe 90% or almost everything, then you've got something going on up here that it might be worth taking advantage of. I'm not saying you should do it. Just because you have a natural talent in something, doesn't mean you should pursue it. I, I, I don't go by that belief. I don't think that just because you have a talent, you should use it. People say, oh, if you have a talent, you should use it. Otherwise, it's wasted talent. Sometimes I think people are good at things, but they don't like them for whatever reason. You know, some people might be really good public speakers, but they might not like public speaking. Public speaking is one of people's biggest fears, you know. They might be good at it, but for, for some reason, they don't enjoy it. Some people might be good at putting things together and working with their hands, but they might not enjoy it. Some people might be good at mathematics, but they might not enjoy it. So you want to find something that you enjoy and that you're good at. And honestly, I don't know if many people find that in their lives. I don't know if that's something that people find. There's a lot of people who are, are really unhappy with what they do. And, and it's, it's sad. It's sad. But now you hopefully you know. This is, this is just my simple measurement based on my personal experience from taking so many math classes. And again, that number is pretty accurate. And I, and I say it's accurate because I've said it so many times. You know, like I've made so many videos, like 60 to 70%. Every time I think about it, I'm like, let me think about it now. Yeah, about 60 to 70%. See, the same answer. Every time I think about how much I understood, about 60 to 70%. And that's because I would always write everything down in every single class. I write everything down, go home, look at all of my notes and try to rewrite them and understand them. And it was pretty much 60 to 70% comprehension every time. In graduate school, it would take me two and a half to three hours to rewrite my abstract algebra notes, which was my best subject. Abstract algebra was my best subject. And it would still take me hours to go through my notes and decipher them. And there was still some stuff that, you know, the teacher would make some statements that were just like, He'd make a little statement, like a little scribble on the board, and it was like some big, bold statement that required some really heavy machinery to have to go back and reprove everything. So yeah, I think it's a good barometer, a good measurement tool. If you can understand more than 60 to 70 percent, um, you're, you're, you have more potential than I did, right, for math. You have more potential than I do for math, right? You definitely do. And I think a lot of people do have a lot of potential. They just don't like it or... But lazy, that's okay. I'm not saying it's bad to be lazy, right? We all need lazy days. Uh, I think lazy is a word that is, you know, thrown around a lot. I mean, you know, people have a right to decide not to study math or decide to do something else. You know, it's up, it's up to you. It's your life. It's your time. But I just wanted to make this video to give you an estimate of what I think is good. You know, for me, normal for me was 60 to 70 percent. If if that's good. Okay, if that's bad, well, I don't think it's bad. I was able to, you know, to do pretty well in my classes, so I don't think 60 to 70 percent is bad based on like my grades, you know, and all that stuff. So, yeah, kind of a random video about measuring your math intelligence, but 
I think it's a good way to do it. And, and you can compare yourself to other people. It doesn't have to be me, right? Talk to your friends, ask them, what, what do they understand? How much math do you understand? When you, when you go to your statistics class, what percentage of the material can you absorb immediately from that lecture without having to do any more work? Or, or when you're in abstract algebra or an advanced calculus or in your Calc 1 class, ask your friend in Calc 1, hey, hey, how much did you understand today? If you look at your notes, give me a rough estimate of how much you understand. And every day do that and you're going to find, you're going to find that maybe it's not that much. Again, for me, if I'm being 100% honest, 100% honest, it was 60 to 70% on average. Certainly there were times where it was much less, <laughs> much less. And certainly there were times where it was much higher, but on average, I think 60 to 70% of what was taught is, is how, much, uh, how much I understood. So hopefully this helps someone. I think it will. I think it's kind of an enlightening thing perhaps for some people watching this video, and I hope it is. And I hope, uh, yeah, I, I'm really curious now. I, I'm super curious. I can't wait to read the comments because I want to know how much you all understood. Am I the one that's slow? Am I super intelligent by understanding 60 to 70%? Let me know in the comments. Oh, before I forget, if you want to learn math, I do have courses. Uh, check out my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Mathsorcerer.com actually redirects to freemathvids. I couldn't decide which website, so I bought both, I bought both domains. Anyways, mathsorcerer.com. And um, the courses are actually on the Udemy website, but please use the links on my website. The prices are set as low as possible. I've got courses on algebra, calculus, differential equations, a whole bunch of them. They're really inexpensive because I lowered the price to the bare minimum, mathsorcerer.com. Also, if you are not a subscriber, uh, and if you want to subscribe, you know, hit subscribe. If not, that's okay. Um, but hopefully after watching this video, well, you're either gonna, one of two things is gonna happen. Well, three things. One, you'll think this is bogus, who cares? Two, um, you're gonna feel really smart because uh, you'll be like, I, I understand more than he does. 60, 70%, what is he, dumb? So you're gonna feel really smart. Three, you're gonna feel really bad because you don't understand 60 to 70% of what's being taught. So let me know uh, how much you understand. I'm, I'm curious, on average, give me your number. How much do you actually understand from your math classes? I am so curious. Until next time, good luck. Take care. Keep doing mathematics.